Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So blood test time again. This blood test was taken on the 19th of November 2021 and I was due to post it at the beginning of December. Um, that was coincided with my trip to the Philippines where I caught Omicron and I was quarantined for a few days in Manila. Uh, then when we got to the Philippines, the typhoon hit no electricity or internet for the best part of three months. So this is for November. There will be one again probably at the end of March, which is a lot closer to this test with regard to posting time, but they are actually three months apart. It's just this one is slightly late in being posted because of the, the issues I had in the Philippines. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's look at my blood test results for November 2021. So just before the test results themselves, let's quickly look at the supplements I was taking at the time of the blood test. Um, people often ask me for this, so I run through at the beginning of these videos. I also list them in the description of the video below. So um, there are a couple of places you can get it. So 1.5 grams of NMN per day, 1.5 grams of trans resveratrol per day, TMG, trimethylglycine, 1.5 grams, berberine, 1.5 grams, Vitamin D, um, vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day. And I take 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday because I want to get my vitamin D levels as high as I can. Uh, vitamin K2, 120 micrograms of the MK7 version of that to stop calcium going into the soft tissue in my body. Magnesium, 250 milligrams per day, and that's the L3 and 8 version. Hyaluronic acid, 200 milligrams of the high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and it is the high molecular weight you need to be taking. Quercetin, 2.4 grams a day, and that's the first, second, and third of each month. Fisetin, 2.4 grams a day on the first, second, and third of each month. Um, that big bang hit, if you like, is going to be a subject for one of my future videos to explain to people who, who ask quite a lot why I only take it on three days of the month. I also take one a tablespoon of dried parsley with my resveratrol uh, in my yogurt. Moving on, let's take a look at my lipid profile. You can see here that my total cholesterol has come down from 216 to 196. Um, you'll also notice my HDL is the same at 50. And my LDL, although still high, has gone from 147.2 to 135. Now, I think the reason that my total and my LDL has come down is that the three or four months leading up to, or the three months leading up to this blood test, when we were renting an Airbnb in Dubai, uh, it was an apartment, not a villa, so I was unable to barbecue steaks and burgers in the, in the same way as I did uh, before we moved to the Airbnb. So I was, I was eating a lot more uh, fish, steamed fish, and a lot more chicken. Um, so I reckon that might be the reason those have come down. Tri triglycerides are down quite a bit from 138 to 123, and that's good because that's definitely a number I would like to get down. VLDL cholesterol down to 24 from 27. Again, that's a number that I would like to see down. My triglyceride and HDL um, ratio and my LDL and HDL ratio are also down. This LDL number, you'll know it's a bone of contention with many people. Um, this range used to be a lot different. It used to have a higher number than the 130. Um, and that number changed around the time that statins became the money-making machine they now are. So I'm not too worried about having a high LDL number, um, regardless of what the, the common thinking is with doctors prescribing statins. So that's it for my lipid profile. Let's take a look at blood sugar. You can see here that although 5.7 is still in the increased risk bracket, it's down from 5.9, so that's a welcome number change. And you can see here that my average blood glucose has gone from 1 to 1, which is fair control, to 115, which is in the excellent control. The reason these numbers are down, I think it may be that for the three months that I was in Dubai um, and Abu Dhabi in the hotel, not working, I was able to go out and exercise um, quite vigorously. The other thing was um, there were no good gyms in the area, so I actually joined a CrossFit class. And for those of you that have done CrossFit, you'll know that unlike a gym where you attend on your own, once you think you've finished, you can't head for the showers because there's a bunch of over-enthusiastic 
uh, coaches that will keep you going until the end of the actual workout. So I think I may have lost a little bit of um, weight when I was there. I put that back on in the Philippines because after the typhoon, all the gyms I would have used were closed um, and it was just walking and jogging that was keeping my weight down. So it'll be interesting to see if this number stays down or goes up when I take it again at the end of March. So that's it for my blood sugar. Good results um, there. Moving on to my liver, you can see here that my bilirubin levels have gone from 0.33 down to 0.27, which is below the reference range. So I did a bit of investigation. There's no clear link between low bilirubin levels and any medical condition. However, some research suggests that bilirubin acts as a natural antioxidant. So that's probably a number I'd like to try and get back up. The remainder of the numbers for my liver profile are all good. So that's it for liver. Let's move on to my renal stats or for kidneys. You can see the only thing that's changed really is my blood urea nitrogen level. That's gone from 20 to 29 and 25 is the upper limit. I did some investigation into that. Bun levels tend to increase when the kidneys or liver are damaged. Too much urea nitrogen in the blood can be a sign of kidney or liver problems. Um, apart from that, there's nothing else that seems to be untoward here, apart from this one, which is the creatinine uh, bun ratio, and that's high because of the, um, the bun level being high. The creatinine is 1, um, which is 1.1 is the, the upper level. That's gone from 0 to 1. So there, there's nothing really untoward in the kidneys. And when you look back at the liver, uh, there's nothing wrong with these numbers at all. And remember this one, which is the bilirubin, has no um, real link between, there's no link between that and any disease. So this is one I'll keep my eye on um, with regard to numbers the next time. Moving on to my thyroid numbers, you can see they're all in the blue. Um, no great change between the last three months. So nothing really to talk about there. Vitamin D, 62.8, down from 64 very close, um, well above the or well into the sufficient range, which is between 30 and 80. Um, it's in the 60s, which is good. I'd like to get it in the 70s, but um, 62.8 is more than acceptable. Vitamin B12, you can see here it's gone down to 3.24, 324. Uh, sorry, not 3.24. Uh, still within range, although the lower end of the range is 211. I'm normally in the 500s and I've dropped 200. I think that's because the three months leading up to this, since my last blood test um, in the apartments, the Airbnb apartment in um, Dubai and the ho hotel in Abu Dhabi, no access to regular red meat for burgers and steaks. And I reckon that might be the reason that it's dropped. Once I get out of this hotel and I rent an apartment, hopefully I'll try and find one with a bar with a balcony so I can start barbecuing again. Uh, start eating the red meat and hopefully that number will go back up. So that's it for my vitamin um, B12. Let's take a look at my testosterone. You can see here that technically they're saying it's high, 913, up from 735. I do not know what has caused that jump. They say it's high because an adult male should be between 86 and 788. Uh, and that's a really big bracket. I thought, I think it should be smaller than that or it should be subdivided into actual ages as opposed to just saying an adult male. Um, that said, if you're between the age of 16 and 21, the upper end of the bracket is 948. So I'm, I'm well below that. Uh, you can see here I went from 599 to 700. That was a big jump. And that's about the same time as I went to 1.5 grams of NMN and I started to take the tablespoon of parsley. I was a bit worried about that, so I stopped taking the parsley and it dropped down to 634. I then reintroduced the parsley and it went up to 744. Now, this is blue because for some reason the clinic changed the brackets for what they considered to be high because the next month they went down to 735, but they changed the number, so technically that was high. So this one here could also be red. Um, so it went red into the high bracket, my, my testosterone jumped when I took one tablespoon of parsley and 1.5 grams of NMN. It dropped when I stopped taking the parsley. And then these could all be red, and this is where I'd reintroduced the parsley. So happy with my testosterone. The last time I did it, in August, I tested my free 
testosterone, and it was 15.31. Um, the next time I do it, which is the end of uh, March, I may well test this to see um, if that number has changed as well. So that's it for my testosterone. If we look at my iron levels, no big change there, all within the normal range. Um, homocysteine, again, was 12, now 14, as long as it's below 30. So I'm quite happy with the, that score as well. Moving on, C-reactive protein. Um, slight change from 0.93 to 0.59, but well below the um, 3.0 milligrams per litre. Happy with that. Lipoprotein A, up to 4.21, but again, well below the 30.0. Apolipoprotein, uh, apolipoprotein, that's easy to say. Uh, no issues there with A, B, or with the ratio. Amylase, from 78 to 79, so no real, or amylase, no real change there. Lipase, from 38 down to 23, so that's quite a big drop down. Uh, but still well within the range, so happy with that. Fructosamine, this is a measure of um, a screening uh, technique for diabetes. I've gone from 197 to 201, but my A1C and my blood glucose have gone down, so I'm not too sure why that's gone up. But again, that's well below the 286. Um, blood, screening one, no issues there whatsoever. Uh, feel free to pause the video and look at those in more detail if you want. Uh, blood 2, again, no issues there. They're all well within reference range, so nothing to talk about there. And urine, the results there, all within reference range and pretty much exactly the same as the test that I had done in August 21, so three months prior to this one in November. So that's it for urine. Let's look at EGFR. You can see here it's dropped drastically from 94 to 83 is now classed as low. That said, you can see my normal range is between 75 and 84. So 83 is the norm. I have a feeling that this may have been an error in the laboratory, which is one of the reasons you should get checked regularly is so you can see what your trend is. If I was only to have been checked in August, I would have thought, great, no issues. I'm 94. All is well and good. Whereas if I've been checked the month before or the month after, it could have been a slightly different case. That said, between 60 and 89, which 83 is, it says you may not necessarily have kidney disease, provided there's no signs of kidney damage, such as protein in the urine. When we go back to my urine scores, you can see here with protein that I've got no protein in my urine whatsoever. Uh, it also says that those people who are between 60 and 89 should have their GFR checked more often. So I think um, once every three months is probably more than enough. Uh, so that's it for my eGFR. So that's it for November 2021. I think all in all, fairly good. Good to see my blood sugar levels coming down. My LDL coming down, but I'm not too worried about that really. Let me know if uh, I think it looks quite good. Let me know if you think there's something that I missed. I'd be more than happy to learn about that. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.